المكتب التعاوني للدعوة والإرشاد وتوعية الجاليات بأبها أدعو إلى سبيل ربك بالحكمة والموعظة الحسنة وجادلهم بالتي هي أحسن بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين <تصفيق> والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم Praise be to Allah the King the very one that makes all things manifest He manifested to His servants the signs with which they can draw lessons and guidance from I testify that there is no God but Allah with whom there are no partners, the Lord of the first and the last. I testify that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is his servant, messenger, the one who was sent as a mercy to jinn and mankind. May Allah bless him, may Allah bless him, his family, companions, and those who follow them until the day of judgment. Dear Muslim brothers and sisters, tonight we meet in this series of uh, lectures, <coughs> experiences, and uh, projects that leading to uh, a completed and compiled picture of uh, what uh, a daya or someone who is calling to Islam should should have plus other things. Today, inshallah, or tonight, we will <coughs> or I will talk about uh, da'wah at the time of afflictions. As you know, brothers and sisters, when we talk about Afflictions, when we talk about fitan, when we talk about trials, usually, most of the time, <coughs> I think, we talk about things in the future, in, in a warning manner, telling that be careful, things will take place, and things, what you should do and should not do. But unfortunately, when we talk about afflictions or making da'wah during the times of affliction. I think this is the time of afflictions. We are starting living the time of afflictions, time of trials, and time of <coughs> uh, fitting and problems. Brothers and sisters, as we all know, Islam, Islam is the complete religion and complete law and teachings. It is, its words are decisive and its judgment, judgments are just. And no wonder, <clears throat> it's the law that has come from Allah, the Almighty. Whoever holds fast to, its, to it, to Islam and the Islamic teachings, will prosper in this life and in the hereafter. Whoever deviates, from it, he or she will have misery and hardship in this life and in the hereafter. It is an upright religion <coughs> whose teachings are noble and characters are lofty. It is full of wisdom, undisputable proofs, and the only guidance for mankind. And no wonder Allah the Almighty has <coughs> chosen Islam to be the religion of all mankind. Allah has chosen Islam to be the religion and the way of life of all people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in, the, in this close translation, that uh, in the meaning of whoever seeks a religion, after Islam or 
again whoever seeks religion other than Islam it will never be accepted from him and in the hereafter he will be among the losers so this is the judgment Islam is not an Arab religion it's not a Pakistani or Hindi or Egyptian religion it's not a religion for anyone and the best it's not also a Filipino religion I see some Filipinos the best the best proof for this is this picture in front of me it's it's it's, it's varied picture of people uh, Muslim brothers and sisters from different various locations and parts of the world in this verse in Surah Al-Imran Allah has decided that there are two ways one is unacceptable and the other one is acceptable which is following the religion of Islam this doesn't mean that we should just go and push people and force people or to, to, to submit unwillingly no and that's what you're trying and we're trying to to negotiate to, to, to equip ourselves with some of the tools in order to convince non-Muslims that this is the way that was chosen for you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <clears throat> the messenger the messenger of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in, in the meaning of that hadith by him in whose hand is my soul meaning Allah if any of this people be he a Jew or a Christian hears of me and yet does not believe in what I was sent with he will be among the dwellers of hellfire correct uh, authentic hadith so when when we talk about Islam this is something that I have learned from the media lately uh, I knew from the past but uh, it, it attracted my attention my attention in the media uh, when when we talk about Muslims usually when you say Muslims you had an you have an I get the idea that we talk about all Muslims meaning all groups and sects and subgroups of Muslims uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam said the Jews divided into 71 groups this is in the meaning of that hadith the, uh, and he said the Christians will uh, divide it also into 72 groups and he said this ummah of Islam my ummah meaning the Muslims will divide into 73 groups all of whom are in hellfire except one and everyone like us now is uh, surprised who are these people I want to be among them so when the, when the companions asked the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said these are the people who follow the book and my teachings my book the book of Allah and the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad and by the way I try to draw a connection between afflictions between trials and between the sects of Muslims I'm not here against any sect I'm just trying to clarify the verses and the, the, the hadith of Prophet Muhammad uh, if you look at now look in the whole universe the afflictions have been placed upon mostly if not hundred percent upon Muslims who are following the book of Allah and the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad and by the way this group is the, is, is the decisive majority it's, it's the you know it's the majority by all means just look at wars now that are taking place they are afflicting this Sunnis or the uh, Sunnah and Jama'ah group of the Muslims the wars look what is happening in uh, in uh, Syria and Iraq in uh, Afghanistan you name it in Burma in you know even the, 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 the hardships the the torture the killing the, the prisoning of people you see that they are concerning they are concentrating on this group no wonder it's the majority but 
it is a, a proof of, of the verse, of the definition of the verse and the hadith of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu that these are the people, these are the Muslims, as we call, and these are the people who will be afflicted. <coughs> Scholars say, in the Day of Judgment, all people, including us, will wish at that time that they had all their lives full of afflictions. My uh, family at the level of family, financially, person, personal level, all levels. Why? Because of the great rewards, rewards from Allah that has, that has been placed upon people who, are, who were afflicted and uh, gone through trials and they uh, kept steadfast in, in the way of Allah. <clears throat> now, uh, another you know, point here is, the, 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 that is, is the enemies of Islam, the enemies of the Muslims, will try to cripple Islam and the Muslims. Of course, they will never succeed. Why? Because they are going against the will of Allah. Allah has promised us very directly in the Quran, in many verses in the Quran, that this religion will, 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 will succeed. It will go to all kinds of houses. This is the hadith of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and it will be successful and it will be yani, given the status among all religions. And it will spread to the point that all people will be Muslims at a certain point of time. And you know the, the story of uh, before the Day of Judgment that what will happen to the, the people and so on and there's no need to talk about that. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, referring to the enemies of Islam, that they, the enemies of Islam, or the Muslims, the enemies of the Muslims, they intend to put out the light of Allah, meaning Islam, with their mouths. But Allah will complete his light, even though the disbelievers hate it. If they hate the fact that Allah will complete his light. This is Surah As-Saf, uh, uh, Ayah 8. The Messenger of, of Allah, uh, the, the, the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, a group among my nation, among the Muslims, will continue standing firm on the religion of Allah. None of those who abandon or dishonor them shall be able to harm them until they become victorious over all people. Even in the way of da'wah, brothers and sisters. Even in the way of da'wah, there are good Muslims who have put this objective as making da'wah to Islam as the last objective in their life, objectives and goals. And there still will be people, inshallah, like you, who will be steadfast and they will continue standing firm as good Muslims and as people who call non-Muslims to Islam. And this doesn't mean that you have to meet Christians or Jews or Hindus or whatever and talk to them. This is not, this is just part of da'wah. Da'wah means that you make da'wah with yourself, with your family, your wife, your, 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 your brothers and sisters, your neighborhood, you stem light that is spreading everywhere to light you, your way to paradise, inshallah, and other way, others' ways. So uh, this is part of, the, of, 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 of the, the meaning of that verse, that even you, by the will of Allah, you are standing fast and, 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 and firm as, as good Muslims by trying to educate and enlighten yourself about how to call to da'wah, to, to Islam. Now, brothers and sisters, uh, Muslims today are facing different kinds of persecution from all parts of the world, as we said. They are being killed. And keep in mind, what do you mean by Muslims? When I say killed, 
ask yourself where where are the killings nowadays it's among you know the 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 the, the, the muslims of uh, who are following the sunnah the the, the, the the book of Allah and the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they are being tortured, expelled from their lands. In fact, they are in terrible situations at all levels, social, political, personal, and so on and so forth. Now, let me give you some of the ideas or some of the, you know, simple ideas about trials you have read about this from reading the Quran you know uh, about the the the, the, the fitan and the trials that took place at the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at even before Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at the time of Jesus and Moses and all the prophets our life is a test our life is a test and if you compare your life to the life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam you will be convinced that Really, if he had وسلم, to go through all that affliction and all that problems, he was born as, as an orphan just from birth. He lost his mother when he was four or six. He lost his father, his grandfather. He lost his wife. He was expelled from Mecca. You know, he was a poor man. All of these are afflictions. It did not stop him, stop him for 23 years to call to Islam. And had it been uh, something that Allah would make easier, it would have been made easier for Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. And even it's mentioned in the Quran that, that when Prophet Muhammad Wasallam is conveying the message, it is very well known. To, to Allah and to us in the book, in, in the book of Quran, that Islam will spread. But uh, Allah is telling Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, do your part, do your job, and the rest, Allah is saying that He, the Almighty, will do. So, if it's that case, in the case of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it will be the case in our <laughs> uncomparable uh, being like human beings, regular human beings. And now, Plus the, the wars and the killings and the, and, and the political unrests as, as examples of, of, of the, uh, uh, the, the fitan and the afflictions. Uh, nowadays, you hear about earthquakes. We had one about a month or so. And it was shocking. I don't mean really physically shocking. It was shocking to the people. Sometimes, brother and sister, when you see somebody is, 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 is being you know, hospitalized, you think, it's not me, no, I'm just watching. No, <laughs> I can't visit that person, but I cannot be a... If you see somebody is taken to the graveyard, we all think it's others, not me. If you see somebody is getting involved in a car accident or somebody being killed in a car accident, we all the time think it's the other, it's not me then where do these people come from? <laughs> it will come to us one day. So, when the earthquake that we experienced, I think about, uh, by the way, I was sleeping. <laughs> I woke up and they told me they, that there was an earthquake and I'm like, uh, three weeks or so, yeah. The, 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 uh, it will come to you, God forbids, but I mean, this is the sunnah of Allah. وَلَن تَجِدَ لِسُنَّةِ اللَّهِ تَبْدِيلًا وَلَن تَجِدَ لِسُنَّةِ اللَّهِ تَحْوِيلًا The sunnah of Allah will take place. It will never change. So, we can experience some of these afflictions. The volcanoes, the tsunamis, the, the Japanese tsunami that struck and, and it was, you have seen it, it was so horrible to the people, even in other continents. Add to this, some of the uh, the trials example of, of the, are, are, are the signs that we have already experienced in, in, in uh, uh, what was what scholars call the minor science the minor science uh, is the killing al-haraj 
you go to your room, dining room, sit down, you want to listen to the news, almost of every <coughs> news channel will, will, will any definitely, almost definitely, you know, bring in their session, you know, news of people who are being killed or were killed here and there, Muslims and non-Muslims. This is one of the signs of, of, of the Day of Judgment. This is one of the fitan. And Prophet Muhammad وسلم, told us that, <coughs> that the killings and the haraj, people are killed for no reason. The killer doesn't know that why he killed, and, and the killed person doesn't know why he was killed. This is the one sign. Some of the signs are the, uh, is that we live in a time where people who are not really uh, in a position to talk about Muslims, they do talk about Muslims. They conquer positions. They have positions where they uh, should not have because they're weak or they are not uh, equivalent, uh, they have no uh, uh, sufficient information or, or knowledge about Islam. They are leading people, they are giving people information, they are giving people uh, and <clears throat> this is one of the signs when, 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 when the matters of the Muslims are given to people who are not qualified. Another sign is when lay people, people who do not, but they don't care and they are ignorant and they are given the chance to talk about Muslims. When Prophet Muhammad وسلم, mentioned in the hadith, when he said that Ruwaybidah uh, will start talking on behalf of the people or judging and so on and so forth. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, told us that a Muslim will go to sleep as a Muslim and wakes up as a non-Muslim. Brothers and sisters, you live in this society, this global village society. Go and listen to the news. Go on, on, on internet. Can you believe, can you imagine 20 or 30 years back that somebody will stand up and say something bad about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu a Muslim? No way. And this is, I think, this point is the hardest sign that has struck Muslims nowadays. There is no value for, is for Islam. <clears throat> I'm not talking about among the non-believers, but it was among the non-believers and unfortunately among the believers of the Muslims. People are humiliating the Quran. People are humiliating Islam, Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, to the point that some Muslims are even challenging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, something that some of the non-believers did not do. If we live in this life, in the internet time, in the social media that we have in our pockets, in our houses, we live in a very strange society, if you say. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, told us that the, <coughs> the, the liar will be a truthful and the truthful will be a liar at the, end of, at the end of life. And I think we are experiencing this now. I think you know more than uh, I do in this, uh, in this manner or in this topic or issue. Brothers and sisters, now you can sense and see on internet, on our lives, the, 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 the behavior of, of, of the Muslims and non-Muslims, especially the Muslims. Let's talk about, may Allah uh, uh, forgive me for saying this, for adultery and homosexuality. It's widespread to the point that is legal, it is legalized or they are legalized in some countries. 
some Arab countries or some Muslim countries or some, you know, semi-Muslim countries, they are trying to illegalize homosexuality and adultery from the, from the point of view that it is individual freedom. Brothers and sisters, we are not created and left astray. We are created by the will of Allah. Allah has created us and Allah has sent with us the guidance, the Quran, and the, and the teachings of Prophet Muhammad I think we should be very careful in this time, and this moment, and this period of time, because these issues, they, they, they just penetrate in our thinking, in our lives, in our education to our kids, in our sometimes acceptance. And this has to do a lot with, with, with ordering good and eradicating evil. Doing Amr uh, al-Ma'ruf and Nahi al-Munkar, which is one of the, 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 one of the, 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 the biggest uh, aspects of da'wah. If we accept, if somebody accepts legalization or accept, you know, uh, some of these afflictions that we are living, there is something bad in our hearts. We should stay firm, steadfast, and have like a mirror, a screen, that what, whatever agrees with the, with the book of Allah and the Sunnah Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi we should accept. Whatever doesn't uh, agree, we reject. Let them call me uh, you are not educated, you are illiterate, I have to please only their creator <laughs> who gave them the ability to say so to me. Now, there are so many brothers, there are so many uh, uh, afflictions. Look at usury and how riba has penetrated in our lives. Now, you go to a bank, somebody, a friend of mine told me, that he went to a bank for about maybe less than 30 minutes. And there was a big amount of money in his account. Now it's very easy to do this. Very easy to displease Allah. Because Satan is forcing, is helping the other side. You know, usually has, 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 has destroyed our lives. I'm talking in general. Look at the share markets. Look at even oh, if the loans that are given by banks in your countries or in this country or anywhere. You know, even if something is not acceptable according to Islam, they go and form a committee and they try to make it acceptable. I'm not discussing that issue. What I'm discussing is the spread of riba in our society. This is another sign. Another sign also is rising of prices. Al-ghala, wal-riba, wal-waba, wal-zina, wal-zalazil, wal-mihan. All of these are signs of getting closer and closer to the Day of Judgment. You know, sickness. There are, you have heard maybe Dr. Ali and others, other doctors here can tell us more about this. You know, you, have, you hear now about many illnesses that you have never, never, ever been experienced in the past. My father and grandfather was a human being like you and I. They lived for probably about the same time that you and I will live, maybe less, more or less. They got sick like you and I, but there were at, the, at, their, at their time, the, 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 there was no so many sicknesses and so many illnesses and so many, you know, so this is another sign, I think. Uh, one of the signs, and probably the last one, is al-ghurba. Brothers, we live in, in, in this period where you feel lonely. Al-ghurba is loneliness. And sometimes, remember if you're sitting in one place, sitting with friends or invited in, in a friend's house or anywhere, and they talk about something, 
that is really against Islam, an idea. All of us usually sit and talk with people and, and, and if you say no, this is not acceptable, this is against Islam, they will say you are probably an idiot, uneducated, you, uh, but, but remember, the Jews at the time Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said this, this to Abdullah ibn Salam. He was their leader. He was their rabbi, their master, and the son of their master. When he told them, I have seen Prophet Muhammad وسلم, this is the man that we are awaiting for, this is the man that we should submit to his teachings, this is the man that was mentioned in the Torah, this is the awaited prophet. He is the prophet that Moses has told us. Follow him. Accept his word. When he started saying so, they said, you are a liar, you are an idiot, you are the worst one of us, you are not our leader. So don't minimize yourself, brother and sister. Don't look down to yourself if you are alone in a setting where people are uh, going astray if the Quran and the Sunnah is being your guidance, you are on the right path. So this time of Urba, you feel a stranger, even within Muslim countries. Needless to talk about non-Muslim countries. Uh, three weeks, I think, back or so, I was, maybe two or three weeks or so, I was in London attending a conference for maybe a week or so, Wallahi, brothers and sisters, regardless of all what you can see in London, what, you know, you are visiting the biggest, one of the biggest, you know, commercial and political and economic cities, you know, you see the advancement, you see the, you know, all of this. Wallahi, I feel so sorry. I have never, ever been close to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi I think more than that time. Wallahi, I was so attached to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi I, I kept remembering Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi all the time. And, 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 and just making Salah and Salam upon him. Because he had came to us with the religion. You know, people, the people I saw, they are very well organized. They are very well, they are systematic. But they are going astray, brother and sister. At the end of the line, they will go to hellfire. You feel so sorry inside. So, this is part of the ghurba, where the, 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 disbeliefs, the disbelief spreads and the, belief, the believers are cornered, are tortured, and, and put uh, uh, cornered or put aside. This time of ghurba is the time where we in dire, we are in dire need of da'wah. Keep in mind, brother and sister, that when you do da'wah, even with our humble information, you are nullifying and ruining many of the, 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 the plans for Christianization and for keeping Muslims away from the religion. It was testified by one of, one of <coughs> the biggest priests somewhere, uh, was Christianizing in, in Africa and thing, and he said that we have airports, we have websites, we have airplanes, we do, we have budgets equal, equivalent to a budget or uh, to budgets of three or four countries, but we are not successful. Why? Because they are contradicting the will of Allah. They are contradicting the will of Allah. So, whatever you do, don't minimize yourself. Don't think that you're minor, you're only... No, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu anh, at the time of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu in Mecca, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, by the way, has no tribal support, no tribal, uh, 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 you know, uh, asset, a, a group of people who will, who, will, uh, who will defend him in Arabia, and unfortunately up to now. 
people will pay much attention to you and will take care of, uh, will be uh, careful when they, when they uh, deal with you if you have a, tri have a tribal support. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud did not have any tribal support. He was a, a little person, a tiny person. One time, he was climbing a palm tree, and when the, when the companions looked up and saw his legs, they laughed. <laughs> so they were so, so small, two legs, small legs. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, are you laughing at his legs? By Allah, he said, Wallahi, innaha athqal min jabal uhud fil mizan. And this is brothers. This, he said that these two legs that you are laughing at, are, they overweigh the, the biggest mountain in Arabia, I think it's one of the, two, the second biggest mountain in the universe, the, the mountain of uh, uh, Uhud. And that's why people are not yani, valued or, or, or uh, yani, judged by their appearance, by their nationality, by their uh, job, by the certificates or the degrees that they get. No. And that's why in the Day of Judgment, you are judged by how much faith in your heart, how much good deeds you have. <clears throat> now, the time of Urba needs us to steadfast and to even work more and more. Uh, keep in your mind, as somebody to call to Islam, that you should educate others around you. Edu I know that some of you have much more information than this topic than me. I know. But we're trying to, you know, to negotiate, you know, to think about ideas and raise ideas and, and, and relate to each other. Try to have the second line and the second group of people who work after you, especially in da'wah. And this is my advice to all of you, brothers and sisters, whether in this country or other. People get older, people get, you know, sick, people, you know, sometimes they are afflicted with, with uh, laziness. They don't really want to work more for the sake of Islam. They're busy with their children, they're doing so on, they're studying or whatever. Try to spread the word, try to, to re-educate people. I, today I met one of my students, I think he's sitting with us, Abdullah, and he was, uh, I was so pleased to see him uh, because I said, Alhamdulillah, maybe there is at least one of the people I knew that who are taking the effort and calling. Uh, uh, now, brothers and sisters, trials uh, and afflictions are sent to awaken the afflicted nation. It's not because Allah hates us, no. Allah loves us the most. By the way, Allah loves us the most. The Muslim is so beloved in the eye of Allah than more other things more than any other thing. It's to awaken us. Indeed, there is a dire need for this self-examination uh, self in order to identify causes of weakness and defect. Wallahi, brothers and sisters, I met people who became more religious after the quake, that the small one that we experienced in Jiza. Why? Because some of them said it's a sign that the Day of Judgment is coming, I should be ready. Or maybe then is a, there is another big one, maybe I will die, maybe I should. So the afflictions are a gift from Allah. Keep in mind that any affliction, as we said at the beginning, that at the time, uh, at, at the, uh, the Day of Judgment, many people will think that they all their lives they were afflicted with sickness, with, with poverty, with, with all the trials and the calamities in life because they see the, 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 the rewards, the tremendous rewards of any being afflicted, being patient on the affliction, afflictions and then pass that test. Have you ever experienced, brothers and sisters, somebody who was afflicted. He was given a fitna or a test from Allah. He stood fast. And Allah rewarded, even, rewarded him after his patience even more and more and more. I know somebody, I read about somebody who lost his wife, two children, 
and he was patient. He cried, you know, so much. But he, he said in that story that it was a real story, by the way, that this is blessing from Allah. This is a test from Allah. I will stead, be steadfast. And then he got married again and he had about nine boys and girls. Five of them were memorizers of the Quran. There was a, a, a YouTube a small video that was sent to me. Group of people, group of young people, where maybe some of you, I'm sure some of you had seen it. They were uh, roaming about in the desert. They met one Sudani. And then, have you seen it, Omar? Yes. They met one Sudani. And they said they were just trying to just laugh at him or maybe joke with him or whatever. And they said, brother, give us one of the sheep. He was a shepherd. Give us one of the sheep. We will give you money. We need to go and kill the sheep and eat and cook tonight. And you can eat with us. He said, no. They said, then if you don't want to, to sell it, just give it to us. He said, no. How about the grave? How about the grave? He said in his humble uneducated words what if I give you and then I put in I am put in the grade what will happen to me this is not what I meant to say I meant to say that the second day I received another message which might you might have received the brother that he was given a check of 20,000 reals by Sheikh Ibrahim Dwaysh what is good 20,000 or five or good let's say 1,000 brothers we have, you know, sometimes we get afflictions in our lives. We lost beloved ones. We lost money. You know, we, 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 we sometimes are faced with difficulties, calamities in our life. Be patient. We should, you know, just try to be patient and you will see. There are so many stories that, that, that this is not the time to tell, to tell you about, about the reward of being patient after uh, the afflictions. So the rewards, the, the, the trials and the afflictions and the fitan, they are to awaken people. <clears throat> there, was, there were, I think, about five or four boys in a car. They rented a rest area, straha, or I think it's maybe a swimming pool and a play, playground and then and they, you know, they had planned a very bad plan to, you know, kidnap a woman and go to that place and do whatever they want to do. So five of the people were staying in the place waiting for that to kidnap the woman and come. And on his way from going to go, to go and do the kidnapping, he was killed in a, in a terrible car accident. He was burned two lashes in the car, inside the car. When his uh, friends stayed for a very long time, they did not see him, they came back and they saw on the way to the city, they saw his car, you know, uh, and they saw his flesh. There, were, there was no flesh, by the way. It was all dust. He was burned severely. Uh, so most of, four of the people, they repented from that point. I'm not saying that we should wait until a problem comes to you or a fitna. No. Start from now. Train yourself. We should train ourselves. Usually when we talk about education, you think I should educate my sons and daughters, the, 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 the small ones. No, no. Everybody is... Why are you reading Surah Al-Kahf today? Why did you read it? You are educating yourself. Why, why did you read about Umrah if you want to go and, and, and do Umrah? Now... <coughs> You are educating yourself. So, and by the way, we should look at our, ourselves and how much we are advancing. And I will talk about this. Now, uh, huge challenges and crises awaken nations and constitute major turning points in their history. And by Allah, brothers and sisters, this is the best time for any, was, any one of us to, to wake up. Look at the news. Look at the whole universe, look at the people, the trials, the fitan, the, everything. This is the time for you and I to repent. 
this is the good time for you and, and, and I to make, you know, uh, plans. Your enemy is within you. Your soul, your soul and your self is your enemy. And in the Day of Judgment, it will be your enemy also. So you are in a race, either you or your soul. <coughs> The, 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 the uh, afflictions and the trials, they revive people to strive hard for their progress and development. Now, brothers and sisters, after all of this, what should we, uh, what should we do? Uh, I'm not here to make you feel sad and it's like some, one brother, when I was in America, years back, he, uh, he took his family from Colorado to Wyoming, Wyoming uh, to, to look and to see the Yellowstone, Yellowstone area, I have not seen it. And from the, from the time they departed their home until they reached the, 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 that place, he was uh, playing uh, a, a cassette about death and how death and what you do when somebody dies, how do you go and make the coffin and the very... And the woman was crying all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and I was crying all the time and he said and he called me and I said well I and I said when you come back do something good brother and stop and eat and you know uh, you know make make don't make her sad all the time <laughs> what's what's the benefit so it's 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 good for us to think what is expected to think what is going around and to understand I'm not trying to 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 make you feel sad or I feel sad, no. But my surprise to you is that if, by the will of Allah, if you are sitting in this room with good intention, you should be proud of yourself. Whether you are afflicted, you know the reward, and whether you are not afflicted, you are listening and learning from afflictions. So, what should we do? What should we do? Should we just surrender and, you know, خلاص, we are cornered, we are killed, tortured, and at least we should stop yani, making more men, more Muslims. No, Allah did not say so in the Quran. Allah said, make da'wah until the day of judgment. Now, <clears throat> okay. First of all, we Muslims have never been in a such need for self-examination as we are in these days of crisis and hardship. We need to have self-examination and everybody knows him, his and herself. Okay? Now, number two, we must understand the causes for our problems and calamities in the light of the Quran and the Sunnah and the guidance of our righteous Procedures. Now, what are the causes? Why, why Allah is making afflictions upon people? Is to, why? It was mentioned in the verse that Allah is afflicting people to remind them and they should go back. They should go back. Allah feels so happy to Allah the Almighty when somebody, when a servant like you and I is so humble like a baby crying in front of Allah and asking for refuge, for rahmah, for mercy, and so on, so forth. And number three, when, when, when dealing with those problems, we must be truthful, sincere, and free from quirky desires and shirk. We should, with open heart, deal with these afflictions. And it must be sincere. Sincerity, sincerity, brothers and sisters, this is the, what will keep your, your, your hasanat or spread your hasanat to other people. Prophet Muhammad ﷺ told us <coughs> that in the Day of Judgment, a person came <coughs> in front of Allah and said, I memorized the Quran. And he said, you did? He said, yes. I memorized the Quran for your sake, oh Allah the Almighty. He said, no, you are a liar. <coughs> You memorize the Quran because you want people to say that he is memorizing the Quran. Take him to Hillfire. The same thing with somebody who went to jihad. 
the best thing that a Muslim can do. And he said, go to hellfire because you did it because you want to show people that you are brave. Brothers and sisters, the Satan is so keen towards dismantling you from your ajr. Talk with humility, with simplicity. If somebody, if you convince somebody to be a Muslim, it's by the will of Allah. Wallah, it's not your will. Wallah, you're nothing. And I am nothing to make somebody a Muslim without the will of Allah. We must have confidence in Allah. Because sometimes going through these afflictions and calamities, you think that maybe Islam is not the right religion. Maybe it's... No, you should have great confidence in Allah and Allah is not letting you go in this life without reward you will see this confidence in your life brothers and sisters we talk about you know the most great the king the most generous Allah the Almighty if somebody would give one real to a poor person and the next day he will have 50 riyals. wallahi brothers wallahi I experienced this myself I was, يعني, I knew this from a close person. He was waiting in his house. He only had 50 riyals in his pocket. 50 riyals with a big family in, on the weekend, you can, can't do nothing. So his brother came, passed by the house, stopped, and he gave him 500 riyals. Why? Because when he went to Salah, Maghrib, he saw a uh, a poor person and he gave him <laughs> the 50 so it's five. wallahi brothers yani alhamdulillah it's islam and that's why when you see people like brian and, and, and people like muslims by birth and muslims yani by convert they are so attached to islam they will never ever dismantle themselves from islam why because they see the evidence that they are following the right religion. Brothers, let me tell you this story. I all the time tell that story. There was one sister from Philippines. She came to the center three times. Maybe Dr. Abdullah uh, is there. I saw him. She came the fourth time uh, and, 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 and she said, Brother Abdullah, Dr. Abdullah, I want to be a Muslim. She came three times willing to be a Muslim, but she was married to a, a non-Muslim. So Dr. Abdullah is trying to make her wait and see, you know. Um, she said for the fourth time, she said, do you guarantee that I will live until next Friday? I will come back next Friday. We, he was almost shocked. And he, as usual, what do you think we should do, brothers? One brother said, call Bin Fozan. Bin Fozan is like Bimbaz nowadays. Sir. So we called on the speaker, Bin Fozan, Sheikh uh, Fozan, uh, Sheikh, uh, uh, and, and we said, <coughs> Salah Bin Fozan, and we, and we asked him, what should we do? He should tell her <laughs> tell that she should abandon, she should not sleep with her husband, and there should be nothing, or he should be a Muslim, or it's divorce. When you tell her, she will say, no, 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 خلاص, I will come back next week, and she will not come, maybe. This is a very big thing that you are telling. You are telling to spread the family. And she had one of the most beautiful boys that I've, I've ever, ever, ever seen in my life. Who about, about eight months of age. <clears throat> now, who hangs the bill? Do you know the story? When the rats thought about, you know, who hangs the bill? Dr. Abdullah, as usual, surprised me and said, Abu Abdullah, go and tell her. Myself and brother Imad, Abu Imad, he's there, Abu Imad. We went up. We met the sister, and we said, sister, it's this, this is the ruling. She stood up, wallahi, brothers. This, is what, this was after doing Salat al-Asr, about 50 men downstairs doing Salat al-Asr. I went up, and I said this. Do you understand this in English? She said, yes. I said, there should be no touch between you and your husband. He should be a Muslim or divorce. He said, she stood up, and she said something. Brother, even... If Islam forbids this son from having this son, I will throw him in front of, between your legs. Wallahi, brother, this happens to me. Then I went down 
and almost about 35 of the people were crying. I, I'm almost crying now. Brothers, there is something in Islam that is so pushing, so, you know, pulling us towards Islam. Islam is good for us. And this is the best thing about Islam that no human being can find in any other religion. Islam doesn't depart you. Then this is the will of Allah. Now, <clears throat> Let, let me try to summarize. Uh, okay, okay. Now, let me just talk about... Now, what should we do? When you're a caller to Islam, make sure that Allah has chosen you. Brothers and sisters, nowadays you are sitting in this room, listening, and I'm sitting with you. We are trying to, to discuss and learn things to help us to call people to Islam. And at the same time, there are Muslims who are more, uh, uh, you know, able than us, they have more money, they are sitting in, 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 in a place where they disobey Allah, or they are watching haram, or they are eating haram. First of all, thank Allah the Almighty that He has chosen you, and He has given you this a chance to come and listen, and tomorrow you apply. Number two, it's sincerity, brothers and sisters. It's not you, Wallahi. It's sincerity. Why? Why? When you sit with, when I sit with in front of a non-Muslim with my simple English, with my, you know, bad character as a Muslim, and talk about Islam and somebody is embracing, <laughs> do you think it's me? I'm shocked. It's not, I don't know why. Why? Because you are, you are showing the buda'a of Allah. Allah ghaliyah. You are showing, the, you are showing Islam. You are showing the word of Allah. Sometimes it's something bigger than your thinking and, 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 the, and the body and the, and the person who are, you are calling. It's something beyond. Allah wants you just to be a connector between him and that person. Convey, brothers and sisters. Something that you must do all the time is progress. Don't stay where you are. If you have 10,000 riyals today, this year, at the end of the year, and you're a merchant, you have a grocery shop or whatever, and at the end of the year, it's only it's the same 10,000 years, uh, 10,000 riyals that you had last last year. The, the following year, it's the same. So then, what should I do? Maybe I should just uh, go and sleep in my house if I am working and you know and doing and so and there is no profit. Brothers and sisters, keep this in your mind. If you are not advancing in da'wah, you must go back and find something bad, something wrong with you between you and Allah. Or maybe you are lazy, like me. You should investigate. You should keep in mind that you get profit. You, I mean, you get advancement. The last thing, and then I will shut up, Brother Amor. Okay. Now, PSO. PSO. I recommend to you the personal strategic objective. Please write this down. Personal strategic objective. This is something that I learned from uh, Sheikh, uh, 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 I forgot his name. Uh, personal strategic objective, PSO. You must add to one objective or goal in your life and put it on the top after obeying Allah that you must not depart this life before having one or more people becoming Muslims by your help, after the help of Allah. Brothers, this is the best thing that you can do. As, as one of my students told me, if I do this, do you mean maybe it's like opening another bank account for hasanat for me? And I said, yes. Some people have three or four or five bank accounts. Wallahi, brothers, if somebody becomes a Muslim and you're the reason, even every single letter in the Quran, every simple movement, every drop of water after his wudu, everything, even when he becomes a da'i and calls others to Islam, and a thousand people or five or ten thousand people embrace Islam, they will be in your account in the Day of Judgment, by the will of Allah. PSO, keep in your mind that you have to put this in. Brothers, 
we are created only for one single cause. It's to worship Allah. Finally, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, if you had a plant, if you had uh, seedlings, seedlings in, in, your in, in your hand, just throw it. If, if it's announced that the day of judgment has come, and you have a seed, a seed in, your, in your hand, just grow it. Grow it. Don't throw it, خلاص, it's the day of judgment. No. Start from now. Pray for me and I do for you. Uh, I hope I, I, I have presented something that is beneficial to me and to you. Uh, and I seek, uh, inshallah, the, the pleasure of Allah. May Allah uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the, the, the knowledge of him, the knowledge of the Quran and the knowledge of the Sunnah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, does not, you know, uh, test us in this life unless we are ready for that test. And may Allah give us the, st the strength and stability if we, are, uh, if we are tested, if we are going through afflictions. Now I will listen to your uh, notes and comments. I'm sorry, I've, I've taken uh, yes, more than, sorry. Uh, thank you for uh, this. I want to ask um, this uh, question. Good. If I want to uh, invite anyone and Muslim, how I can uh, how can I exhibition about the students of uh, Muslims in uh, Syria or uh, Iraq or like this? Uh, first of all, I think, I think we, when, when, when we call people to Islam, we call people to the book and the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad They should judge, they should judge Islam according to the Quran, not according to uh, whatever happens. Whatever is taking, uh, taking place in, in Syria or other places is, is as a trial, as affliction, that Allah has chosen those people to go and endure these afflictions. And uh, they, they, uh, 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 somebody who is seeking Islam should not have this as a barrier, that Muslims are fighting, Muslims, there are liars among Muslims, there are so on, cheaters. Yes, they, we do. We are human beings. All, they, are, they are good and bad Christians. They are good and bad Jews and Hindus and so on. But, and there are also good and bad Muslims. So we should judge Islam, not judge the behavior of Muslims. Another question? First of all, uh, thank you, Dr. Muhammad, for this nice lecture. Uh, I have a question. Uh, uh, we want all to call to Islam, uh, but we're afraid of making mistakes when we call somebody to Islam, or um, they have uh, some misunderstanding about Islam or that. Uh, what's the, uh, I mean, important uh, skills or things that we have to follow? to convince somebody to convert to Islam. Okay, I, I think the first thing is to start. And start easy. Attend, attend training sessions like this. Uh, uh, start with guidance with somebody. Uh, read about Islam, read the Quran, read about how there are booklets. Somebody, a surgeon, a professor, a surgeon, wallahi, he asked me, I said, I want to call people to Islam, but I don't know how. I, am, I speak medical English, and I said, and I gave him a brochure. Ten pieces of that brochure is sold for one real. And I said, read this, it will tell you. This doesn't mean that calling people to Islam is easy. It's not easy, brother. It's not easy. But I'm not saying stand in front of uh, a priest and, and argue with, with that priest. No, I mean start. Develop yourself. It's, it's only step by step. I, I know a student of, a student of mine who sat and, and at the beginning, he was teaching people how to clean their feet. People, new Muslims. And then he taught, taught them uh, wudu, taught them salah, and so on and so forth. Start, my son. Start. Start. Easy. Read about the, the, the pillars of Islam, the pillars of faith, and so on and so forth. Please. 
uh, there is a question here. I think it's uh, one. I think it's from from the sisters, brother. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the, the sister is, is saying that uh, can we uh, have this lecture in in in, in, a, in a big congregation and a big probably in Kincaid University or so. I I I, I wish I could do this. I, I I'm ready. Whatever uh, you want me to do this, uh, I am ready. Maybe uh, uh, we can even develop it more. Uh, I, uh, I'm sorry, uh, I teach my students not after giving a presentation. Don't say anything bad about your presentation. You will ruin the whole thing. But let me tell you a secret. I was planning this to be a PowerPoint, but I, I lost some of the, the, the connections and some of the flash uh, and so on. So, inshallah, next time it will be much, much better. Mustashfa uh, Asir, I can do it anywhere. I can do it anywhere, my sister. Uh, anywhere, just contact me. Uh, we can do it anywhere. We can. Any question, brother, before Salah? Last question. Please. Okay. Assalamu alaikum okay. warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. First of all, I thank you for this wonderful lecture. I'm having a one question that I heard from learned people that for Dawa you should be. Uh, tajud means you should offer a tajud properly. Without that, you can't do anything. Is it correct or not? Well, brother, this is part of educating yourself. This is part of educating yourself. If if I had uh, thought about this more or had a chance, more time to say, I will tell you, brother. If you want the blessings of Allah to be showered upon you, be a good Muslim first of all. Don't go to people and tell them about Islam and at the same time there is something wrong with you, like me. You know, we should establish the five prayers. We should pray the sunnah. We should pray the night prayer. We should supplicate to, the, supplicate to Allah to help us. We should be good Muslims because if the da'wah is not helping us, it's like somebody is a tube. You take the good thing, and it gets given to somebody, you are not benefiting. Yes, yes, but if somebody is saying night uh, prayer is, is not good for me, I think I cannot wake up in the, in the uh, khalas, don't do it. <laughs> but for some, for some people, yes, if you can, please, educate yourself as much as you can. Uh, before we close, I would like to ask question. Uh, please. Firstly, there's so many people or common question that how we can make da'wah that we don't have the facilities where uh, in fact uh, how to resolve it where in fact the Prophet Muhammad said send them a poor and orphan and there's so many people they say that we cannot do personal da'wah because we don't have facilities or any gadget or anything that uh, to make da'wah because we are poor and second question is how we can identify sense that our time is a time of afflictions that uh, this certain group are out of, belong to the 73 groups that, uh, to be thrown in the hill fire. Thank you very much. The second question was? The question is, uh, in our time, it's a time of reflection. Uh -huh. You said people uh, in your beginning that uh, there is uh, 73 sects or groups in Top Islam. Hadith. All of them are thrown in the hill fire except one. How can we identify those groups uh, belong to those 73? Okay. Thank you First of all, this is a saying, this is a hadith of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu authentic hadith that says that the Ummah, uh, the Christians, Jews has, had, you know, dismantled into 20, 71, the Christians 72, and the Muslims will, will be 73 groups, all of them are in hellfire except one. And the, the companions asked Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu who are these people? He said, whatever was in, on, 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 on Kitab Allah, the book of Allah, and my sunnah and my teachings. So uh, if, it, if you mean by your question is how should we deal with other, you know, other groups, they are Muslims, by the way. We, we, I'm not here to judge them. We, we, should, we should have good, good, good intention. We should accept them, call them, to clarify to them, explain to them, you know, the right path. Okay, uh, your first, your aerial question, the first question, the facilities. I wish, I wish it was my decision. Wallahi brothers, if it was my decision, I would make ministry of Quran. Ministry of Sunnah. <coughs> Wallahi brothers, I was thinking about this. Why should we not have wazarat al-shahadatayn? Why not? The two testimonials, ministry of that, the two testimonials for Salah. I mean, a separate ministry, separate ministry.
for salah, separate ministry for zakah, separate ministry for siyam. These are the things that we are here for. Ministry of Hajj also. These are the things that we are here for. We are not here for money. We are not here for, 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 for whatever. Of course, Prophet Muhammad told us, told us that you, do, you live in your life as you are going to live forever. And you live for, for your religion as you are going to live to die tomorrow. So we should work very hard. I wish we could have the facilities. I wish we could have, you know, the, the, the budgets, the airports, the, 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 the money, the, the, the colors to Islam. I was, and, and, and I hope this is a, a, something that I wish I could see before I die, is that we have from among the Muslims, people who are specializing, especially from our university students, people who are, can specialize in calling Hindus, calling Sikhs, calling uh, Christians, Catholic, Protestant, they specialize in this, in this field. And by the way, the Muslim, your aerial question, you my son, the, the, the Muslim has much more knowledge that, than any other non-Muslim about even their religion. So I wish we could have the facility. But by the way, brother, we should not wait. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu had no facility. At the, any, in contrary, he was, had, he, he was fought. He, he was opposed. Now we are not opposed. You can't take a small booklet and give it to an non-Muslim. You can't talk to an non-Muslim. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu has spent 10 years calling in secret da'wah. So this, this is what makes it sweet, I think. And inshallah, in the future, it will be much better in, in, in regards to the facilities. I'm sorry, Brother Omar.